I have a new favorite song. It's called You Are Good, and I'm going to play it tonight. So. You are good. I like the name. Very basic. It's very true. You got it. 12 o'clock in the morning. All right, y'all sing loud. Clap, yell, scream, whatever. <laughs> Giving stuff up. What else? What else do we talk about? To put Jesus first. Put Jesus first. Priorities. Anybody else have anything? No. What was the big question you're supposed to ask yourself? Are we loving like Jesus? I know. Okay, if anything you have, could you give it up to Jesus? 
Yeah, it's got enough. Um, we talked about it's got enough if, if you aren't guaranteed anything else in life, but having a relationship with Christ is it still enough. It's still worth being a Christian. And today, we're going to talk about, um, do you get it? That's the question we're going to ask. Um, do you get it? Uh, so go to James 2.19 if you have a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, then you can just look at the screen. Because I'm cool and got a screen. James 2.19. I use this verse all the time. Uh, you've probably, those of you who have been coming for a while, you've heard me say it, uh, I don't know, five or six times in different sermons. Um, because this is a lot of, a lot of truth in this. Um, and it applies a lot to us. James 2.19. And you can get out your phone if you want. Again, don't be playing stuff. I don't have an app, but I gather that. <laughs> you don't have the Bible app. You should not get <laughs> James 2.19. You ready? Yep. Yes. Good. James 2.19. Here, um... So it says, you believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. It's so true, isn't it? I mean, the demons know there's a God, right? Um, there's passages throughout the Old Testament where God, not God, Jesus, kind of the same thing. Jesus is on earth and is casting out a demon. And the demon knows who Jesus is and is scared. Jesus doesn't have to proclaim who he is. They just know who he is. And, and the question we're going to be going at today and how it relates is there is a difference between knowing who Jesus is and really getting it. <coughs> um, and the analogy we're we'll pulling off of is baseball. Uh, who in here plays baseball? Well, or softball? Softball. Go and play softball. Um, how many of y'all know how to play baseball? Who doesn't know how to play baseball? Anybody? Nah. <laughs> Everybody knows how to play baseball. Yes? yes? America. Huh? This is America. This is America. <laughs> it's America's pastime, right? But some of you, some of you, some of you in here know how to play baseball, but you just don't get baseball. Um, you, you know how to play. You understand the concept where there's a bunch of guys out there. Some of them are overweight and not the athletic ability at all. Like, <laughs> like, like Lance Berkman, so... But he did, lose, he did lose a lot of weight. I'll give him credit. He slimmed down when he went to the Cardinals. I thought he was supposed to be Yankees. Yeah, you can talk about that. I don't know. He just won the World Series. He did win. Anyways, okay, so y'all know how to play baseball, right? Yes. Baseball, if you know how to play and if you're playing it, is awesome. Because you're standing out there, at any minute they can hit you the ball and you can make an awesome play. And, and you, you, know, you get double play, you can make a dive and catch. Any minute something great can happen. But... A lot of people, and, and it baffles me, but a lot of people I know hate baseball. I hate when people say that. Huh? I hate when people they hate I baseball. Hate they, I know. It's not, America. it's not me. <laughs> it's Caleb. <Caitlin. laughs> what? There are people. There are people who time baseball. Like I know one of my mentors, kind of guys, um, timed the whole baseball game as to how much action there is, and it ended up being ten minutes. Like there's ten minutes of action in a three-hour game. Which is kind of true, yes. It's relatively true. They just don't get it. They don't get baseball. So it's a leisure game. <laughs> it is. It's it's you gotta wait for them to happen. It's and then that happens. happens. And then nothing happens. Oh, nope. Never that <laughs> See, but they don't get it. It's the same thing for me and soccer. Oh. Uh, Nobody likes soccer. <laughs> this is America, exactly. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes soccer, except for people who just love soccer. You either hate it or you love it. Yes? I hate There's it. no in between. There's no in between. It should only be played in the And it's kind games. of the same thing with baseball. You can appreciate a good baseball game, but you either hate it or you love it. You know, uh, I played it on a, a soccer intramural team at U of H this last fall or whatever. And, and it was really dumb because I just kind of ran around and kicked the ball. And, I mean, I don't do it. It's 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 <laughs> apparently, there's more than that. It's my understanding that that's all they do. <laughs> well, if you look at the scoreboard, that is all. <laughs> it's like zero to one. Yes, they tie. They don't have plays. They're like maroon. No, they get the tie. They actually do have plays. They, really? they do. They have plays. Like 
I had this one play where I tried to kick it in the goal. It never worked. I'm going to give you two play back. You never played soccer back? See, see, that's the thing. If you talk to somebody from a different country who plays soccer, so soccer I, is everything. This is soccer is their football. It's their baseball. They get soccer. Why are they their football? <laughs> <laughs> All they can afford is a little ball. If I was also bad. Oh, you don't be mean. Here, come on now. Really? <laughs> but y'all know what I'm saying? We get baseball. Some of us in here get baseball. Some of you in here are like, oh, I love nothing better than Sunday than going home and watching a good baseball game. Right. Football. You know, you know, the Astros wear their Astros wear their brick red on Sundays, and it's great. Oh, I love that. Even, like even that. if they're losing, those jerseys right, just make me happy. Yeah, that's a good uniform. <laughs> it, it is. It's just a great uniform. Sundays are great for that uniform. Some people like Red Sox, and we can forgive them. Um, <laughs> that's too bad. No. <laughs> that, that's her, by the way. <laughs> Um, but, but again, baseball. Baseball is something you either get it or you don't get it. Um, one of my brothers, not Caleb, and not David, the other one. I'm <laughs> <laughs> not going to say any names. I'm not going to say any names, but it's the other one. It starts with a D and rhymes with annual. Daniel! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Daniel, I thought it was, I thought it was Bruce. <laughs> Fail. Just like all <laughs> Anyways, Daniel would be a perfect... My voice is cracked. Did you hear that? Yes, it is. Daniel. Daniel would be a perfect baseball player. He's a little chubby, like a baseball player. He's got a beard. Exactly. He's he's a little he's short and stocky, not like my size short. He's about two inches taller than me, so he could be a professional. He has the build to be a professional baseball player. You know, his. I mean, he's. Have you seen his forearms? If you put all that into a bat. It's, yeah, I know. He's got going. his hand eye coordination is better than anyone I've ever known in my life. Literally. Would you agree with that? Like, I can play ping pong. <laughs> Y'all see me play ping pong, right? I'm relatively good at it. I can't hit the ball past him. He blocks it. Like, he's just quick. He's, he's Yeah, and then he throws the paddle and it hits the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about now. No, I, I, I try to hit the ball as far as I can, and I bounce it up, and then he throws it, and wherever it lands, the ball hits the paddle. That is impressive. I don't think I've ever seen that though. <laughs> you should watch my game. You have to do every time. You should watch one of the <laughs> No, but really, every Sunday. Daniel, Daniel would be great at ping pong. I'm in Not ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> baseball. He'd be great at baseball, but he doesn't get baseball. He just doesn't get it. He understands the rules. He just doesn't get it. He thinks that you're just standing out there for no reason. He, think he would much rather be playing Xbox or something else. And, and that's, that's like opposite of me. Like, I would love to be on the baseball field right now. As much as I love talking to y'all, if someone, like, one of my friends call me at baseball, I'd be like, I'll see y'all later. Get out of here. Preach ourselves. <laughs> yeah, here's the first Just make some fun. <laughs> make up something. All right. Hey. You can take turns. But I love baseball. Listen, guys. But I love baseball. I get it. Daniel does not get baseball. Caleb, I don't. Caleb, do you like baseball? No. Caleb doesn't get baseball. <laughs> He just doesn't get it. How many of y'all don't get baseball? Caleb. You understand the sport, but you, you're like, why do they do that? I get it, but I'm not good at it. <laughs> so I don't play. And, and this sermon is not about baseball. It's a reference to. It's an analogy. It's not the guy with bench warmers. Huh? Like throw the bat everywhere. The guy with bench warmers. Bad. That's a good one. <laughs> and we're like that a lot. Shh. We're like baseball. We, we get it or we don't get it when it comes to the, to the Bible, when it comes to God. We either get it or we don't. You could be like Daniel and Caleb and whoever else raised their hand. I don't know. Anybody? No. So I can Jared. say your name. Woo. Jared. What's what? I don't know. Oh, what? <laughs> Whatever is my name. Um, you get it. I mean, you, you get the concept of baseball. You get, okay, you stand out there, they hit you the ball, and then you throw it and you get the guy out. You know that there's a force run that you have to go around the bases, and, and the way you win is by you go to home plate more than the other team, yes? That's what baseball is. But if you get baseball, that's not all baseball is. And a lot of us in here probably don't really get what being a Christian is. We get that you read your Bible just like we get you run around the bases. We get that you pray to God just like how we get that you hit the ball with the bat. We get those things. We get the idea, but we don't really get baseball. We don't really get this Christian life. We don't understand why. We don't understand the joys of it. And, and this is verse right here. 
um, should show you there's a difference. There's a difference between knowing that you're supposed to read the Bible and knowing that you're supposed to pray and actually doing it for a reason. You know, read that verse again. Um, or you have my Bible, just because I think that's cool. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. There's, I mean, knowing about God is not enough. There's a difference between knowing about God and living God. Um, and this, we're going to go to the second verse here. Uh, what I want you to get from this is that it's not just a story. Just like in baseball, when you, when, when you look at baseball, if you're someone who gets baseball, you love baseball, you can't, nothing compares to just playing baseball. Um, it's, it's not, you don't look at it, oh, these are the rules of baseball. You just look at it that this is baseball. You know, when someone says, hey, how do you play baseball? It's just, it's like everything's one thing. There's not just rules and reasons and everything. It's just one thing. It's all wrapped up into you love baseball, and this is what baseball is. And that's what, that's what the Christian life is. It's not, you know, what is it like to be a Christian? You don't say, okay, well, you can't have sex, and you can't do this. You can't, you can't uh, cuss a lot, and you can't do all those things. That's not what the answer to that is. It's a lifestyle. It's not just a story that happened a long time ago. Being a Christian is so much bigger than that. Um, so Galatians 2.20. Let me, let me find it. Is anybody actually using their Bible anymore? Or they all just reading? Mm-hmm. Good job. I recommend that. Uh, I do recommend doing your own Bible. Then you can highlight or do other stuff in it if you want. I don't either. But you could. Galatians 2.20. Shh. Call it quiet. Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loves me and gave himself for me. Is that what I said up there? Yeah. Awesome. Good. I just copied and pasted. So. <laughs> I was hoping it would be the same. Um, what does that mean? Anybody know? What does that mean? In, in reference to this whole baseball analogy we're going off of, what does it mean? Anybody? Are you cheating? They're cheating back there. Jesus. Here, I'll just tell you. Jesus, did you lead all the way? Wait, 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 wait. No. Designating your <laughs> Okay, this is what it is. This is what it is. Basically, it's a life. Your Christian faith is your life. There's no separation. It's not just a thing. It's just like when you look at baseball. If you get it, baseball is awesome and it's great and you want to play all the time. If you don't get it, baseball is just a thing. It's just a thing that people do. Yes? Yes? And the Christian faith is just like that too. It's a lifestyle. You are with Christ. Christ lives in you. You live for Christ in everything you do. Your life is about Christ. If you really get it, if you really get this Christian thing, then it's not just a thing that people do. It's really what you do. It's your lifestyle. It's everything. When you look at something, Christ is in that. When you do your homework, last, last week we talked about your priorities and how God is really your only priority and how you know you have your big three we talked about last week, which were God, uh, family, and schoolwork. And how it's really just one thing because you glorify God in your schoolwork, and you glorify God in your family, and you glorify God by praising God, obviously. And so it's all one big thing, and everything you do is about God. And it's the same thing here. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. What you do in this body. You do with Christ. You do for Christ. It's a whole. It's all included. It's all together. It's all for Christ. And you have to get that. You have to get that. Just reading the Bible, just obeying the rules, are not good enough. And to get that, it's not about that. Being a Christian is not about just reading the Bible. It's not about praying. It's not about tithing when you get older. It's not about attending church. If you think that you're attending church and you're going to heaven, then you're not getting it. If that's the only reason you think you're going to heaven, if you think that doing good things is enough to get you to heaven, then you're not, you're not getting it. You're not getting this Christian thing. 
You're just like somebody who doesn't like baseball. Who thinks that if you get the outs, then you'll win necessarily. And and you will. If you get an out every time somebody comes up, you'll, you'll win. But it's you don't get it. That's not what baseball is. It's just about everything. It's about the fun. And that's saying the Christian. Being a Christian isn't about following these rules. It's a part of it. But everything you do is about being a Christian. Everything you do, everything you say, every decision you make, every thought you have, is part of you living with Christ. Um, let's go to this last verse here. We're almost done. This will be quick. <coughs> Second Corinthians. Do it weird, because now I'm turning to the place in the Bible and you'll just sit there and watch. Second Corinthians 5, 13 through 15. Turn your eyes to the screen. You don't trust it? Is that what you say? He doesn't trust the PowerPoint? I'm a little skeptical. Got that from the internet. This is in my hands. I can trust it. It's true. Everyone's tampered with this. Well. There? Everybody there? For those of you who have the Bible app, you don't have to search for chapters and stuff like Jared thought you did. You can just click on the thing on the top and scroll down and select the one. Jared. Okay, quiet, Jared, you know how to spell Matthew. You know how to spell Matthew. What? No, I don't know how to spell Matthew. <laughs> there are two T's. <laughs> Alright, 2 Corinthians 5, 13 through 15. Listen up. If we are out of our mind, it is for the sake of God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love propels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, and those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Same thing? Yes. Mm-hmm. Alright, good. When you really start to get it, you start doing things that aren't necessarily rules. And that's what I'm trying to work at here, in, in case you haven't caught on, is that if you think that this lifestyle of being a Christian is about rules, then you're not getting it. If you think this lifestyle as a Christian is about something you can do, then you're not getting it. This lifestyle of Christian is about Jesus having come down and died for your sins because you messed up. Everybody in here has messed up once. Yes? You've done at least one thing wrong in your life. The Bible guarantees that to us. And so everybody in here is not good enough to go to heaven. But Jesus came down and sold the wrath of God and paid that penalty, which was death, for us. And if you think that your way to get to heaven is to obey Christ, obey God, then, then you're kind of right, but not really. You're, you're doing it wrong. You understand the general concept, but you don't get it. If you think that the way to get to heaven is to say a simple prayer, then you don't get it. If you think the way to get to heaven is come to church, if any of these things, you don't get it. Uh, like this verse says, these verse say, you're going to want to do things. When you play baseball, it doesn't become about the rules anymore. <laughs> Once you've played for a certain amount of time, you don't think, hey, I'm just grabbing this ball at shortstop. There's a guy on first. I should throw it to second base. In the first base, you get a double play. You don't think about that. You just do it because you want to win. Yes? Those of you who play baseball are following me. You don't think through when the ball gets to you. You don't sit there and be like, oh, yeah, what happens? Oh, he's going to run there. You just do it. Hmm? Instead of playing the bench. The in garden deck. Played that bench well, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're bad. Just some bitter feelings towards baseball. Um, but it's true. You don't, as Christians, we don't do that either. When you really get Christianity, you are so desperately trying to find out about God. You're so desperately in love with Him that you're doing whatever you can to grow closer to Christ. And that is by reading the Bible. That is by praying. That is by coming to church. That is by doing good things. But that's not why you're doing them. You're not doing them to go to heaven. You're doing them to get closer to Christ. Because that's when you really get it. You really get it when your lifestyle is getting more and more like Christ every day. When your relationship with God is, is growing. That's when you get it. If you can't look at something you've learned in the Bible in the last week you probably don't get it. Either that or you're just kind of falling away. You've forgotten why you're doing what you do. And I do that too. 
you know, even though I'm in this position, staff, everything, I still do that. I'll read my Bible every day and, you know, think back and say, what did I learn that last week? And I'm not getting it during those times. I'm thinking, okay, I'm reading the Bible, check, done with that for today. And it's not a checklist. It's not, a, okay, we got one out, now we got two out, now we got three outs. In baseball, you don't do that. You just you play the game. Just like you live a Christian life and everything is in it. Everything is in it. You know, whenever in baseball, and, and some of you don't know baseball, probably lost you this whole sermon, that's okay. In baseball, if you ground the ball or somebody flies out, not flies out, they, they hit the ball, line drive out to center field, which is down the outfield, and you ground the ball, you don't run to first base and try and get him, do you? <laughs> you would have to be pretty stinking fast. But you don't do that. You throw it to first, yes? If you're going to try and get him out first. Normally, he's already at first. Sometimes it's fast. That's kind of mean. I've seen a right fielder throw that guy first. I've seen it too. Not center field, though. I've never, I've never seen center field. Um, but, but you understand what I'm saying? There's no rule. There's no rule at all that says you have to throw it. Yes? Can anybody think of a rule there is? There's really not. So why do you do it? To win. It's the best way to win, yes? It is the most effective way to win. And it's the same thing here. If you are really falling in love with God, if you have the right mindset of that you want to love God, you want to be with God, you want to praise Him, you will do what you need to do to win, to be closer to Christ. And that's getting it. And that, that is where the, the, all these rules come in place. That's where the laws come in place. That's where reading your Bible, coming to church. That's where that stuff comes in place. And that, that's your desire to win. Not your desire to go to heaven, because that comes in your relationship with Christ. That comes by accepting Him into your life. But when you really get it, everything else kind of falls into place. You're compelled. Like the verse said, Christ's love compels us. Compels us to do things. We're compelled because of Christ's love for us, because he died for us. We're compelled to, to reach out and help somebody in need. We're compelled to come to church. We're compelled to fellowship. We're compelled to do these things. And if you don't know what compelled means, it means we're kind of, we want to really bad. We have this need, this urgency to do it. Not because somebody's telling us, but because you just want to. And if you're here today because your parents have dropped you off, because you just come to church... If you're not here to learn about Christ, then you're not getting it. If you're not here because you want to know more about God and you want to love Him more, then you're not getting it. You're not getting this whole Christ thing. You just think it's some game like baseball that just kind of happens. You don't get it. You don't get how great it is to catch that, that last uh, over-the-fence ball that's going to go out and they're going to win the game and you pull back in. Or to hit a walk-off home run. Or to steal a base when you really need to. You don't get that. And some of you who don't know baseball, you're like, oh, I totally understand the don't get it side. And some of you know baseball, you're like, oh, I get it. And you're thinking, why don't I act like that with Christ? And that's true. You need to. <clears throat> why don't you have that feeling of, I want to win this so bad. I will do whatever it takes to win this. When instead, as Christians, we have the idea of, okay, if I have to read the Bible, I'll do it. You should be excited. You should say, I might read the Bible today and learn something new about Christ because I get it and it's important. And so as we, as we uh, close here, um, there, there are four options that you are right now. I made a list there. They're right here. I'll show you. This is a phone number. Two. I don't know why I showed you that. Um, option one. In this room, you have people one of these four. Option one is you have no clue who Jesus is or what I'm talking about. And that's possible. Um, you may have no idea what I'm talking about. You may know some of these baseball references, but not know who Jesus is. If that's you, I encourage you to come talk to me when we sing these songs here in a second. And Ted, you can come up, go ahead and start coming up if you want. Um, when we sing these next last two songs, you know, I encourage you to come talk to me when it's done, or the person next to you even, and they can tell you about who Jesus is and what he's done and how great and excited and how we are as a church. We're excited that Christ loves us and that we get to be in a relationship with him. Option two, if that's not you, this might be you. You know the story of Jesus. You know that he came. You know that he died. You know that, that you can go to heaven because of him. And so you're just kind of doing things that you think are going to get you there. 
like coming to church or reading your Bible or praying. You're just kind of thinking, okay, well, uh, I guess I should do something. I should be a good person. You know, if that's you, then you're not getting it. And you're in danger of not going to heaven. Because it's no matter how much church you go to, you're just, it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough to cover that one sin. Only a perfect sacrifice, which is Jesus, can cover that. And so if you think that you're a Christian, if you think you got it before, and for some reason right now, you don't think you got it, there's something different. You look around at people, and they're doing things not because they're just doing them, but they're doing them because they love Christ. Then there's something wrong. There's something wrong with your life. And, And come talk to me. Come pray about it. Talk to somebody. Option number three. At one point, you thought you got it. You, you were just learning baseball. You were just learning how to throw and stuff. And you thought it was great. But really, you just liked that your dad was standing next to you and be like, oh, good job. You liked that your friend got to hang out with you because you were playing softball together. And as, as the, for the Christian part, you, you, were, you were at youth camp or something. And, and somebody came by, and, and you felt all this, somebody came to the camp, and you talked, and there was dramatic music, and there was, like, candles everywhere, and you felt this need to come down to Christ because everybody else was, except Christ. And, and, and somewhere along the way, you don't feel like that anymore. After you left camp, all the emotions were gone, and you realized, hey, maybe I made an emotional decision, not just a Jesus decision. You know, if that's you, then... Come talk to me again. Come talk to Don. Pray about it. Pray about do you really get it? Uh, and this last option, which is probably most of us. You understand and you get it. You do, you get it, but you just forgot. Somewhere along the way, somewhere along the business, somewhere along the homework, you forgot what it really is about. Sorry. Did you have a chance? <laughs> yes. This Don. This Don. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but but this is, if this is you, somewhere along the way you just didn't get it. You forgot. You forgot why you do what you do. Suddenly you're trying to your your desire to to know Christ, your desire to love Him more, turns into more of a oh I have to read my Bible today. Hope I'm not late for school. Or uh, I'm too tired. I guess I'll read this in bed and fall asleep halfway through. Or pray at meals or pray right before tests just because you feel like it'll help you. You know, if that's you, I encourage you not to sing this first song. Um, just pray. Say, God, God, I want to get right. I want to be back on track. I want to get it again. I want to be reminded of what it's like to worship you and praise you. What it's like so that you're so excited that you can't help but glorify God in every conversation you have. You know, there's probably very few in this room that that would fall into a fifth category in which they got it and they're living it right now and I'm honestly not one of those a lot of times I fall into this one this fourth one where you just you get it you got it at one time you understand but but you just you're kind of falling away from it other things are more important baseball is just a game again it's not baseball season where you're excited being a Christian doesn't have a season it's it's always so I'm going to pray, um, and, and we're going to sing a song. Uh, we're going to sing whatever song this is, and I don't have a title. Um, and I encourage you to, to pray about it. Sit, sit where you're at. You don't have to stand up if you want. Pray about what it means to, to get it. And, and ask yourself, do I really get it? Do I really understand this whole thing? And if not, I encourage you not to leave today until you know that you get it. If you need me to explain it to you, I can do it. Just don't leave here until you get it. God, I thank you so much, Lord, for today and everything you've done, God. I pray that these students just just come out of of their hiding, come out of their their shell where they're scared, where they're, uh, they're worried about the people next to them, God, and they realize that that this is important, and that we really need to get this. We need to really understand what's going on here, God. I pray that you you touch each one of their hearts, God. I know they're here for a reason, Lord. I pray that they 
if they realize this reason is to grow closer to you, God, and to worship you and serve you, Lord. Thank you for everything you've done, everything we'll do. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. afraid to get loud on this one. Let's leave on a good note.